In this video, I'm going to show you how I attempted to achieve a similar style of drawing and filmmaking to the master Kim Jong-gi. And I want to emphasize attempted. <laughs> I feel like I got closer and I learned a lot of things in the process of trying. So I want to share those things with you in this video. Before I start the video, I just want to tell you about the Animator Guild Forum. The Animator Guild Forum has moved to Discord now, so I will provide a link for that in the description. We're going to be trying out some animation assignments every week where you can try to animate to a certain theme. A small theme, you know, it's just a casual thing, but we're just looking for more people to join before we start. Head on over there and uh, the best ones will be shown on the channel in, in an upcoming video. Okay, that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. Now onto the video. Now the origins of this little experiment came about from me trying to create this um, title sequence for a very famous old film called Seven Samurai. It's one of my favorite films. It's a classic created by Akira Kurosawa and I wanted to create a conceptual title sequence for this and many of you might have seen my stream where I tried to do this using my conventional sort of methods of storyboarding in this action scene and I showed it to a lot of people and asked for their feedback and they didn't feel like the way I was telling the story fit what a, an opening title sequence should be for the film and so we, we discussed it and we arrived at this conclusion that maybe I should try this kind of style that Kim Jong-gi has where he creates a big illustration and that illustration tells a story. You can see it being drawn. The order in which things are drawn reveals pieces of information to the audience at a certain time and rate so that the story unfolds the more they watch this piece being drawn together and then the final conclusion is where you can see the outcome of the story or you know or you can see the whole thing in its entirety and I thought that would be a really cool experiment. I've been assigned to do this title sequence and I didn't know what to do for a long time so I was working on it but it just wasn't right so I'm gonna go for like a Kim Jong-gi style of drawing which is very intimidating because he's a madman like no one can do what he does and that's why he's famous and so it's going to be like one of these time-lapse drawings in brush pen I want to also film myself drawing it you want to make it look like you're just putting that fresh mark onto the page so that's where the tricky part comes in other than Kim Jong-gi, I have a few other influences for this. One of them is an artist called Zi Chao Kai. I'll try and spell that up on the screen. Now, this guy is a phenomenal concept artist. I don't think he's very uh, well recognized here in the West. Not many people seem to know him. But he creates these amazing pieces of concept art, which, and what I like about them the most is that they lead your eye around the page. So your eye is kind of taken on a journey around the piece of concept art where it's revealed different pieces of information. I really like this, so that was one of them. And also his paintings are just so grand and so detailed and um, really impressive just to look at. I'm going to be using this desk here. I'm gonna put as many lights around it as possible. I'm gonna lay out my paper here and try to take some nice photography of me uh, doing this time-lapse drawing and we'll see how it turns out I guess. So these first drawings are not the final drawing, I will get to that in a later stage, but these are just warm-up drawings because I wanted to build my confidence with the medium using this brush pen by Pentel. I will try to link in the description where you can buy that brush pen. I was also experimenting with this black acrylic ink, uh, a thin paintbrush. These ones were really kind of low stakes, you know, if I messed them up, I would just throw them out and try something else. They also didn't have construction lines or anything like that. I found that with this art piece, I struggled a lot less to, to create it. 
uh, at least conceptually, because I knew the story I wanted to tell. Now, I'm not telling an original story with this. I'm kind of retelling a very well-known tale. Um, it's been remade many times since Seven Samurai. I also went through a phase of not doing this and not telling stories with my art. And whilst I was able to make some things which might have looked quite nice, in the end they felt kind of pointless and they had no direction. They felt more like warm-ups, like to look at they just looked like practice, art practice. This is uh, a problem that they, they will lack direction and they won't have purpose if they don't have that story element in them, or that, at least that's what I've found. But I don't want to guide you on, on what your story has to be, like your story can be anything really. And projects like this where I'm really out of my comfort zone, like I, for this project I'm really, I'm not an expert in this at all, that really helps me to learn that the way I've been doing things is not necessarily the only way that I could tell a story. And so the next time I have to create a story, maybe for a client or something, I will be a lot more open-minded and I'll think, no, I don't need to just tell it in the same way I've told a lot of other stories with these storyboards and in this linear order. It could actually be done in a different way. So it, it's opened up a lot of different opportunities for me. Right, I just finished two tests for this project. Yeah, uh, it's taken me a couple of hours. I just drew them on my desk. These are my equipment that I used. Uh, got the watercolor pastels here. When I've not been sure what a mark is gonna look like, I've just uh, put the mark down here just to test it before taking it onto the actual paper. I've got ink there, acrylic ink, and just a bunch of different pens and paintbrushes and stuff and another light just to illuminate this properly. As a first attempt I thought it went quite well so uh, that's good news. It's always nice to be playful you know. Being playful is really really valuable in art so when you can just forget about all the pressure, about the pressure to impress people, the pressure to, to be good and the pressure to meet the client's uh, need uh, although that is important, of course. All right, here goes nothing. The first thing I learned about this project, and this is in more of a general sense, I learned what this style of filmmaking turns out like. In my usual style of filmmaking, uh, it's a little bit different. It's a bit more fast paced 
and it's a little bit more snappy. And when I was telling this story through a piece of artwork and showing the process of me drawing it, it was a bit more of a slow, relaxing experience to watch back, I feel. So it was more slow paced and it gave you time to appreciate the drawing itself and, and to pay attention to more of the finer details. In terms of the editing process, it was also interesting because I filmed it. It took a long time to draw, so I had a lot of footage to edit down and to cut down. So. I ended up taking out a lot of it and I had to be quite ruthless with my editing. So I ended up throwing out a lot of footage just because I wanted to tell the story in a way that wasn't going to make people bored to watch. Problems like the depth of field, the exposure, lots of different challenges I had to deal with with that. The other thing that I learned from this is that uh, it, it gave me even more of an appreciation for artists like um, Kim jong Gi. What he does is so special because when you're creating a sketch, when you're creating a concept piece, you usually just sketch out the rough layout of things. But in this kind of story that you're telling, that wouldn't be as effective because you're then not able to withhold certain pieces of information from the audience at the right time. For him to be able to hold all of the information the, the detailed construction of the drawing in his own mind, that's an amazing feat. You can see the footage of me trying to just sketch things in ink without any construction lines. And I am able to create illustrations, but they're just not uh, at the same level of quality that I could get if I were to put down construction lines and if I were able to plan it out beforehand. Maybe that is something that if I worked at for a long time I would be able to uh, overcome and I would be able to finally just have it in my mind's eye but right now it's not something that creates good results. Some of the editing, I noticed that the, the best parts to leave in were the parts where my hand stayed on the page for a long time and it wasn't just the hand going up, trying a bit, coming back down, going up, trying a bit, coming back down, but the, those long strokes are really, um, they're very appealing to watch on when you play it back. So those are the kind of edits that I put in just for anyone who's wanting to make one of these themselves. But I would recommend doing that. Uh, make sure you check out animatorguild.com. Remember about the Discord group that we now have. Link to that in the description. Animator Guild is my website. It's where you can find lots more tutorials, source files, downloads, recommendations, all those kind of things. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.